everybody. Welcome back to the three-part event of Air Plant Care 101. Um, so in this episode, I will be continuing um, on describing some of the most important information on caring for your air plants. And today, in this episode, part two, we are going to focus on watering your air plants. Um, so yeah, let's again dive right into it. Uh, one of the first thing I would like to do is to um, debunk the myth that air plants don't need water. <laughs> um, so I think if you've been growing Tillandsia for a while, obviously you would know this, uh, but I've had many um, customers or even friends that came up to me saying that they would like to get an air plant because um, it's so easy, it seems like it's so easy to care for and you don't need to water it. And then I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Uh, that is a misconception. So they might not look, you know, like a plant that needs water because they, again, they can grow without soils. They kind of just hang out like this. Um, but they are live plants and most live plants need uh, watering. And in fact, many air plants, um, they originate from tropical areas and um, they like high humidity. So definitely watering is part of the routine that you have to um, keep to make sure they are happy. Um, so yeah, in terms of watering, I would like to start to talk about the quality of water first. Um, so what kind of water to use uh, and what kind of water not to use, I guess. Um, so. Personally, I like to use tap water that's been sit through um, overnight uh, to allow harmful chem chemicals such as um, chlorine to evaporate so the water is um, safe to use. Uh, you can, if you have less amount of um, plants to water, you can also use um, filtered water uh, with a Brita or whatever that you have. Um, but basically you want the water to have a little bit of mineral content in there um, because those are uh, helpful nutrients for air plants um, because you have to remember air plants they don't have um, roots to um, absorb to absorb nutrients and water so they are um, depending on their leaves to absorb all those nutrients yeah so you want the water to be a little bit more uh, nutritious I guess um, so so they can they can grow well uh, so that being said one kind of water you don't want to use is distilled water um, they come in bottles like this so these are not um, the best water to use because they have no nutrients Okay, so like I mentioned, tap water would still have some of those mineral contents in there, so that's why I decide to use um, tap water most of the time. So another type of water you can use is rainwater. Um, I, a lot of people collect rainwater, um, especially if they have outdoor space. Uh, for me, unfortunately, that's not a very practical way to water my air plants because I live in a condo on the 12th floor. Uh, so yeah, unless I ask family and friends to help me collect rainwater, I really don't have that option. Um, so another thing you can do is use rice water to water your air plants. So um, this is a good way to, again, provide some nutrition for your air plants. And um, so basically if you are a household that um, cook rice, uh, before you cook the rice, you have to wash it. So the, the water that you use to wash the rice, you can use that to water your air plants. Um, also save some water. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the idea. Um, I have uh, been asked about lake water um, or pond water. So from my understanding, I think that will be okay as well because um, as long as the water doesn't have heavy salt content um, like ocean or sea water uh, it should be fine but just make sure the water is clean you know and if you see bugs or, or like 
some microorganisms living in there, um, then probably it's not the best because it might cause um, fungus problems or rotting. So yeah, so you want to make sure the water is clean. So that goes with even tap water. Sometimes after you use the um, tap water to water your air plants by soaking, um, the water will become dirty. And especially after a few days, the water will get kind of even dirtier. So you don't want to reuse that water. Uh, I usually would like get new water in buckets to, to, to water them if I soak them more than once a week. Um, yeah. So that's the, uh, in terms of water quality, did I miss anything? Oh, uh, I think also aquariums. Uh, aquarium water apparently is also pretty safe for air plants and I've had heard quite a lot of success stories with um, aquarium water um, and they just basically dunk in the plants on top and the fish don't usually go eat it. Um, so yeah, so that's another way you can water your air plants with your aquarium water. Um, yeah, but personally because I have more than 500 plants to water at a time, so as some of you may know, I use my tub to fill up all the, um, fill the water up and use the tub to water my air plants. And even that's not enough, so I have a few buckets. Um, yeah, so if you came from my previous episode, you might want wonder why there's a bucket in front of me, and here's your answer. I'm using it to um, film the next part, which is the watering your air plants. Anyway, so yeah, I think that's pretty um, complete about um, water quality and the type of water to use. So if you still have questions about that, again, you can leave it in the comments to, to um, let me know and I'll try my best to answer. So now watering routine um, or frequency, uh, I soak my air plants once a week pretty religiously. Um, because I noticed I used to soak them every like 10 to 14 days when I first began and I found that some of the greener type of air plants they don't do well they start to have um, uh, brown tips or even the lower leaves just kind of go to a crisp yeah so I start to water them at least once a week by soaking and um, also in between I spray them with um, spray bottles yeah, so anything like this, you just kind of use the spray bottle to, to spray their air plants wet and allow them to dry. So if you're using spraying method uh, only, I would recommend you do it every other day. Yeah, or even every day. Yeah, so for me, I think that's, even, that's more work than <laughs> soaking once a week, plus um, every two, three days I spray once. Um, so yeah, so I think personally that's the best combo for my growing area uh, and my environment. In Canada it gets pretty dry, so that's one of the reasons that soaking is so um, widely used here. Uh, if you're growing in Asian countries or some of the more humid um, southern states, for example, um, then you might not need to soak it as much. Um, yeah. But I find my plants to be very happy when they get weekly soaking plus um, spraying. Um, so one thing about spraying you might want to remember is when you spray your air plants, you want to make sure you thoroughly wet the leaves. So you want to make sure the leaves are not just kind of has some droplets on it. Yeah, you want to really get in there and make sure um, the leaves turn into a darker green. Um, and for example, for some of the white Talensias, they, they completely change color. Yeah, so that's when you know you've sprayed enough. So kind of like this. I'll be bringing the camera closer um, later on to show you the, the soaking part. But just kind of want to quickly go through the um, spraying part of the watering routine. Um, okay, so yeah, before I talk about... Um, how long to soak and things like that. I'm going to bring the camera in just to show you guys um, how I soak some of my air plants. So let's get right into it. All right, so I have my bucket here and I will be showing you guys how I soak some of my air plants and a few things that you might want to watch out for. 
Um, yeah, so let's go through some of these plants. So I have a rosette shape one here. This is a uh, um, Tolenzia capitata. So rosette types, they are pretty friendly when it comes to soaking, uh, meaning that they don't really have any problem with rotting um, that I've experienced. Yeah, so basically you just dunk the whole plant in. Uh, sometimes you have to give it a little push to make sure they are really um, in the water, submerged fully in the water. So sometimes it give, if you give it a little tap, you'll see that the plant um, kind of bubbles a little bit. Yeah, so that means the, the trichomes, the hairs are opening up and the water is being absorbed by the plant. Um, yeah, so basically you leave it in there. I soak my plants for ranging from 30 minutes all the way to 2-3 hours. Sometimes even longer for plants that look really thirsty. I leave them in there for much longer. Um, so how do you tell your plants are thirsty? Um, one of the things you can check is if it has brown tips on some of the newer leaves. So if you do see that, then that means the plant might be already dehydrated for quite a while. Um, so another thing you can see is if the leaves are a little bit curled in. So this one over here, you can actually see a little bit of curling inwards of the leaves. You know, instead of being super flat, it's a little bit curled. So for that, you can leave it in for like a good 3-4 hours. Um, some people even soak it overnight to open it back up. Yeah, so that's one thing um, that rosette type of air plants really uh, tend to show. So you can use that to see if you need to water it or not. Um, so after you water, after you leave it in for a certain amount of time, you take it out and you just want to give it a good shake um, to make sure all the excess water um, in the middle of the plant is all um, gotten rid of. <laughs> so you don't want water to stay in the center of the plant. That's generally a bad thing to do because um, it might experience uh, rotting. Uh, so it's called crown rot because uh, the center of the plant is rotted. Um, and usually that's, there's nothing you can do for that plant when it's at that point. Yeah, so be very careful when you're um, taking your plants out to dry. All right, so now I have a bulbous type of um, air plant here. Uh, actually, I'll show both this one. This is the bulbosa that flowered, and this is a pausifolia. So I will um, dunk both of them in, and again, just leave them there for a few hours. And then for bulbous type of air plants, you have to really, really shake it when you take it out. So these are the type of air plants that I have lost quite a few um, due to rot. So you want to take it out and really give it like a pretty vigorous shake and you'll see quite a lot of water come out um, when you do that. So until you feel that water has you know pretty much um, done dripping uh, then you can go ahead and bring it to the drying area which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, so some of the thinner leaves air plants, I'll use this plant to talk about two things. So this is a Funkiana, it has very thin leaves. So for these type of air plants, um, you can give it a little bit longer soak as well because the leaves are thin and they don't take in water as um, easily. Um, so yeah, so you can give it a longer soak to make sure the plant is um, has a nice drink. So this plant also flowered. And this flower is already almost done, but I just want to use it to, to um, kind of show you an example. So when you have flowering plants, I tend to not water it by soaking. Yeah, I just kind of spray the leaves to make sure it gets some um, hydration. But I don't soak them because if you soak them and the water goes to the flower, the petals, yeah, then the flower will dissolve and um, kind of cut short the blooming um, cycle. Uh, so, I mean, it's not detrimental to the plant's health, but you basically won't be able to enjoy the, the blooms as much. Yeah, so, I mean, if you really want to soak it, you have to find a way to kind of hold it up like this so the flower doesn't um, get touched by the water. So, yeah, typically I don't soak my uh, blooming air plants. 
So I have one here that I just want to show you. It's a very beautiful tectonum, uh, snowball. Yeah, so one of my favorites and a lot of um, fan favorites, I should say. Yeah, so this one is just very interesting when you soak it because it turns into a completely different color. So I just want to quickly show you that. Now it's all white and when you put it in the water, pretty much um, instantly it becomes a green color, as you can see. Uh, and this one also bubbles a lot because again it has a lot of hair so the trichomes opening up and creates some um, fizz fizzle okay so yeah that's that's kind of what it looks like after you water it so that's always fun um, so drying your air plants after you water it this is a very important step of the watering um, routine uh, I lay my air plants on towels and in their trays um, and kind of just lay them flat in my um, plant room here to dry um, but a very important step is I use a fan to circulate the room uh, I have one of those oscillating ones that turns yeah so it really helps the air to circulate and dry the air plants faster so um, for me that's become a must because I've lost air plants before I started to do this way often um, yeah so especially the bulbous ones they just kind of rot out and when you notice it's already too late but since I've been doing um, the, the fan method um, it's been much better so highly recommend it um, either that or you have to open windows um, if you're watering indoors okay so that's a very important thing I wanted to mention as well uh, and then lastly but not least, I will be talking about fertilizing your air plant. So, um, our store carry this type of um, air plant fertilizer called Epify Delight. So, it's a type of fertilizer that's specifically designed for um, epiphytes, which includes air plants and orchids as well. Um, so, if you, um, I'll leave leave a link in the description description that you can find it. Um, but also, if you need um, if you don't have access to this kind of um, fertilizer, apparently some bromeliad or orchid fertilizer can also work. Okay, so um, it's a this kind of powder type um, fertilizer. So how I use it is um, I always dilute it a little bit more than the description. So they say per one gallon of water, use um, have a have a tablespoon and this one this spoon over here is less than half a tablespoon so I basically use a good spoonful of this okay or you know just almost a spoonful I guess yeah so you want to put it in the water and then give it a good stir to make sure the, the uh, particles dissolve and then yeah basically you use this water to soak your air plants and that's how you fertilize them um, alternatively, you can also put this water into spray bottles to spray the air plants. Um, but sometimes you might forget and then spray them again um, using the same bottle, and that will be over um, kind of over fertilizing your plant, and it can burn the leaves. Yeah. So also very be very careful when you're using soaking method to fertilize. Again, dilute it to like at least half the strength of recommended um, just because I've personally burned air plants this way before yeah when I use a little bit too much and yeah so just be careful especially the green leafed um, Talensia they don't like too much fertilizing uh, yeah so but other than that fertilizing is good for um, overall plant health because it provides some nutrients that they can't get just from water um, so you'll see some better growths, some faster um, popping, um, and also it, it encourage the blooms. So yeah, definitely a good thing to do. I only fertilize my plants every one once or every one month or every two months, really. Yeah, so I don't do it that often. But again, if you have access to fertilizer and you want your plants to grow faster or you want to see the blooms, then this might be something you want to consider. Okay, so um, 
Let's bring the camera back to... I'll just quickly close this video. So hopefully you enjoyed this um, part of the demonstration. So I'll be right back. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in to the second part of Air Plant Care 101. Um, to, so hopefully you guys have very clear idea about how to water your air plants, what kind of water to use, and um, drying your air plants, things like that. And as well as uh, fertilizing, I touched on that, touched on that a little bit. Um, yeah, if again, if you have further questions, feel free to contact me through Instagram, YouTube, uh, comments, <laughs> and I'm also on Facebook. Yeah, so let me know if you have any other questions or anything you want to clarify. Um, but other than that, um, again, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy growing. Bye bye.